sometimes you just look around and you think, this is exactly how it would have been for them. They would have seen what we see. Sometimes it gives you a little jolt, you know. After a few miles of tall grass prairie, the wagon train comes to an abrupt halt. Despite careful preparations, the lead wagon experiences some problems. I broke down. Fortunately, the wagon train is near the area where they plan to stop for lunch. The noon rest stop reveals one of the primary duties of a modern day wagon master. I am porta potty man. They call me poop, they call me squirt, they call me <laughs> you name it, I've been called it. It's just one of them things that has to go along with the modern day wagon train. Ken assumes responsibility for this unglamorous but essential service. In pioneer times, any tree, rock, or bush was a potential restroom. Ladies would stay on one side of the wagon train, men on the other. It doesn't work the same today. Gary finishes his emergency roadside service while Connie comforts a horse with a cold. Tending a sick animal can be a bit risky. After lunch, it's time to saddle up and hit the trail. Ken takes his wagon on ahead to the evening camp. The party travels alongside actual remnants of the immigrant trail. These remnants are depressions in the ground, called ruts or swales. They were made by the actual immigrant wagon trains. Thousands, it took thousands of wagons to make a depression in the ground. And through the years, it has washed, magnified a little bit. And almost everyone's different. Wagon ruts are different from modern day roads. Animals that pull the wagons trample down the center of the trail. Erosion takes place creating a U-shaped depression, or swale. Roads made by motorized vehicles are high and flat in the center. For many years, most people thought all remnants of the immigrant trail in Kansas had been erased by road building and agriculture. Local landowners knew better. At first, it was just something, yeah, it's here. We're not gonna plow them up, we're just gonna take care of them, because our it's been in the family four or five generations, and there's no intention of getting rid of them. And now it's kind of getting to be a competitive thing. Who's got the best ruts, and who's got the most, and who's got the biggest, longest length, you know? Far from being removed, more trail traces are coming to light. Ken and other local trail experts receive calls from landowners eager to determine if a trail remnant exists on their property. A lot of them are saying, well, I've been raking hay for here for years. And he says, every time I go through this dip, I lose that hay. You know, you've got a side delivery rake. And we go over there and look, well, yeah, he's losing it because there's a heck of a swale there. He's going down through a dip and he's, he's lost it. And uh, we find that a lot. With a slow but steady pace, wagons and riders make good time. By early afternoon, they've traveled over 12 miles. The wagon train arrives at one of several creek crossings. There's potential danger when crossing any type of water barrier. Ken determines the route of the wagon train in part by the availability of safe creek crossings. I had one landowner who wanted us to go through his properties and we couldn't find a good creek crossing. That's fine, we can go around. No, 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 no. And within two weeks I had a phone call. He'd had a dozer down and he pushed us in a crossing. 
Even with careful attention to crossings, things still go wrong. We rolled a wagon in a creek. One lady got uh, really pinned under the wagon. The driver got pinned under the wagon. He couldn't hardly keep his face out of the water. And there was a big concern there for a short time. Everybody rallied together, controlled the course of the mules. When I seen we was going, I gave them the magic word, whoa, and pulled on the lines. And miraculously, they stopped and stood there. And everybody come up, got them unhooked and out of the way, and eventually raised the wagon up off of us. And nobody was hurt, seriously. They just sore from bruises. Bruised and shaken, three travelers summoned the courage to climb back into a slightly damaged wagon. It was a close call that left an impression on everyone. It also illustrates the harshness of pioneer times. Medical attention was not too far away had it been needed today. In pioneer times, there was nothing besides what they brought with them. There were many graves all along the immigrant trail. This creek is small compared to some of the rivers along the immigrant trail. River crossings often took lives and destroyed property. The pioneers crossed them because they had no choice. Today, Ken elects to cross a river via modern highway bridge. Safety takes precedence in this case as the party momentarily departs from the ambience of the 1840s. After 10 hours on the trail, the wagons and riders make it to the evening camp, a roadside park dedicated to the memory of earlier travelers. It's been a long day, but there's more work to do. Trucks and trailers left at the morning camp are ferried up to the new camp. The distance that earlier took 10 hours by wagon has just been covered twice by pickup in under an hour. Before dinner, some find time to carry on a pioneer tradition. Susie, a history major in college, had an unforgettable lesson today. She was in the wagon that tipped over and was briefly pinned underneath. There's plenty to write about tonight. The temperature will drop below freezing tonight. It's not a good time to sleep under the stars. Typically my sister gets to sleep in the wagon and I sleep out and occasionally get to switch off. And she was nice enough to invite me into the wagon when we expected a 30 degree night. And never slept so close to someone in my life. Others join forces to stay warm as the cold prairie air encourages everyone to get cozy. Tonight's meal tastes especially good after a 14-hour day of hard work and play. No one even wants to question the historical accuracy of a catered meal. The next morning, the party is ready to hit the trail a little earlier as everyone adjusts to the more primitive way of life. Before heading out, Ken addresses a problem from the previous day. Several cigarette butts were found in the wake of the wagon train. One more cigarette for passenger, period. That's out. That's all we needed was a prairie fire. I'll chew them out for doing something, and then we'll all have a big laugh and uh, start all over. But I got the best darn bunch of people out there. They're hard to explain, they're good people. With Shorty as the lead scout, the wagons begin to roll. <laughs> Old and new technology do not mix well with such a difference in speed. Can make sure everyone stays safe. Keeping to the modern road only as long as necessary, the wagon train once again gravitates to open prairie and the immigrant trail. During all this time, they've seen trail because we're on the Oregon Trail, we're on the California Trail. We know this is where we're at. We know this is where they were 150 years ago. Darn, we feel good about that. I think you get just an inkling of what the pioneers went through um, and just that feel of 
of being out in the open and seeing the old swales and the ruts that they traveled in and some of the hardships that they must have went through. The sights and the sounds were just magnificent. I had an opportunity to walk ahead and wait for the wagons and the outriders to join us. And there's ghosts out there. They're, they're really worth You just felt like you weren't alone waiting for them. We live in a day of cell phones and computers, and it definitely sets you back a little bit. It makes you think. You don't know about heat and cold and horses and travel by wagon until you've actually done it. I suppose it has something to do with coming to an understanding of what our immigrant ancestors went through. I enjoy it. I'll be doing it as long as I'm physically able to places where we can drive. When we get to the end, and it happens every darn year, they kind of create a bond together. And when we do that through the wagon train, when it comes time to say goodbye, some of these people won't see each other for two more years. There'll be a lot of tears. You know, there'll be a lot of hugging going on. It's been over 130 years since the last immigrant passed by. But the prairie seems to beckon wagons and riders to grace its gently rolling terrain. The sight of canvas-covered wagons and the chorus of sounds they make somehow completes the scene. As long as people like the Martins and the wagon train riders desire to celebrate the pioneer dream, there will always be wagons riding across the Kansas prairie.